that he and Jules Nyquist host monthly out of Placitas, New Mexico. I've met many poem, poets through Cactus, including David, and I'm really, truly grateful. John lives, as I mentioned, lives in Placitas, New Mexico, helping run Jules Poetry Playhouse. And I have my mask from Jules Poetry Playhouse. I love this mask and edits Poetry Playhouse publications. He is a retired English professor whose poetry collections include On Kinesis, Tapakalitius, I'm not pronouncing that correctly, my apologies, Ro Road Ghosts, The Joe Poems, and now Joe Rides Again. Further Adventures of Joe the Poet, which we'll be hearing from today. Thank you, John, and congratulations on Joe Rides Again, and I'm glad he did. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Um, I, just to mention, the Cactus reading is Wednesday night. It's uh, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, and that makes 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so, and you can find out if you go to the Jules Poetry Playhouse uh, page on Facebook, Jules Poetry Playhouse, you can get information, okay? And uh, this is uh, it's actually my second time reading in, uh, in this wonderful series. Uh, and I think the first time was the end of March, beginning of April, something like that. And it was all, this was all so new to us, this, this whole virtual reading thing. And I am just um, so, uh, so amazed and, and uh, thrilled that Sandy and Elizabeth have been able to keep this going week after week for these, these many long months. And uh, anyway, congratulations. On, on a great series. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, just explain briefly before I start reading from my book that uh, the Joe poems um, are uh, about uh, a mythical, maybe, uh, poet, tra uh, time traveling, dimensional traveling, gender bending poet, sometimes known as Joe the poet or Joan the poet or other names, and um, it started 2012, this collection, The Joe Poems from Foothills Publishing, and um, then people started writing their own, so we did the Mojo Anthology, <laughs> and uh, then last year, friends, when I retired, friends published Joe Retires, <laughs> and now, uh, also from Foothills Publishing, uh, Joe Rides Again, uh, The Further Travels of Joe the Poet. And I just wanted to thank Whitney Gratton, who's a wonderful uh, designer who did both the first and, and this uh, Joe book. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna start with uh, the first poem in the collection, which is called Joe Rides Again. Had been years since anyone spotted Joe Rumors were flying that he was dead. Folks even consulted the Ouija board or played records backward to no avail. Then one day in the merry month of May, someone sees Joe pumping gas into a beater car at the Indian-owned self-serve near the interstate. They say, Joe, we thought you'd return on a white horse named Mescalero or descend on a marmalade cloud, but here you are, looking like an ordinary Joe. What you see is what you get, says Joe, as he gets into the driver's seat and his chariot begins to lift. And uh, next, Joe the Poet's latest book. Joe's preference is to fold his poems into paper airplanes, sail them off canyon walls, buried deep in the wine-dark sea, he hides poems under desert rocks on bus stop benches and subway seats, inside Gideon Bibles in fuck motels. 
inside fast food wrappers, under magazines in doctors' waiting rooms and county jails. Somewhere, the one who needs one may find their poem. Now, Joe has a friend who collects the poems Joe tosses over his shoulder. Joe hasn't exactly agreed to their publication, but neither has he made a fuss. Joe says, don't assume you know the author from the poem. Says all these poems are pale copies of poems written 10,000 years ago, because my memory ain't what it used to be. And that's why I say, as told to John Roach. Um, <clears throat> This is a good one for this time of year. Joe converses with Chuang Tzu's gardener and starts with a quote from Emerson. What is a weed, a plant whose virtues have not yet been discovered? It was that time in late summer when all the weeds you've been pulling for months turn out to be beautiful flowers. Chicory, goldenrod, Joe pie weed, Queen Anne's lace. <clears throat> what you should know about Joe on a first date. One, Joe's been around the block a few million times. Two, Joe could teach Tiresias a thing about gender bending, and some say she has. Three, Joe prefers a cafe that's unpretentious, a place where everybody knows your 10,000 names. Four, Joe's got only one outfit and identical ones in the hamper, so Mater D's usually won't let him in. Five, you'd think after all this time, Joe would remember not to order spaghetti on a first date. Six, it's not like Joe means to make his date pay the tab. It's just that all he might have on him at a particular moment is a drachma. Seven, Joe doesn't believe in doing it on a first date. The world's too full of two-bit demigods already. Eight, a melodious voice can unlock Joe's heart. Nine, the stars, the stars, the stars. 10, Joe's not much of a conversationalist, but he just might write you a sonnet. And uh, I'll do Cup of Joe. Joe's poems are handpicked and hand ground by Joe himself, not talked by corporate shill with a donkey. Joe's poems contain no additives or fillers. Joe's poems are slow baked on blanket in the sun. Joe's poems can be boiled over pinyon wood campfire or French pressed and served with chicory. Joe's poems are served daily at Cafe Vesuvio and Cafe Lina. Inhaling aroma of Joe's poems, you find yourself in Jena, 1796, or Paris, 1871. Drinking in Joe's poems, you find yourself somewhere in time. Joe's poems always ease you on down the road. And Joe's hat. Joe wears a poet's hat, chin strapped tight against high desert winds. Joe picked it up on the trail some years back, the Ornada del Muerto, or was it West Texas? Took it off a skeleton, but the, cat, but the hat was practically new, a bit dusty perhaps, weathered leather giving it character. He lost his last one, along with his cash and one kidney, aims not to make that mistake twice. I'm gonna skip down a little bit. <clears throat> Joe's original tongue, there's no truth to the claim Joe spoke primitive Quendian growing up, but his original tongue's unknown. You can pick up a language or two outside Joe's place alongside potsherds and crumbling statues to forgotten gods. Joe used to be fluent in Phoenician, not much call for it nowadays. He does find Indo-European useful for crossword puzzles. It all started with that Babel business. Joe tried to warn them. Soon languages were popping up like snakes in a corn crib. It's all pretty amazing when you think of it, but the really sad thing is even Joe can't recall his original tongue. Um, <clears throat> uh, move on to the next section. <clears throat> 
uh, Joe crashes the Grand Slam. Joe's at the big poetry slam with his old friend Silenus, the lame half-blind satyr. Joe and Silenus sit patiently as contestant after contestant declaims their triumph over absurdity to crescendos of finger popping, followed by cards reading 9.8, 9.9, even 10. Joe helps Silenus to the stage. The judges, puzzled, check their lists. Silenus commences, count no man happy while he lives, concludes, it is best not to be born at all. Next to that, it is better to die than to live. The room goes silent. The judges search frantically for zeros. Joe places the laurel on Silenus. Um, Joe at the movies. Joe loves the movies where he can get glimpses of places he's lived, places he's destined to live, places he'd never thought of to visit but for the imagination of the filmmakers. Joe prefers a sparsely populated old-fashioned bijou, maybe a weekday matinee where in the dark he can be alone with his thoughts and his popcorn. Joe's wild about international films which aren't foreign to him and black and white silence where his mind supplies the sound and color. Joe did his stint in Hollywood back in its glory days, but found himself blacklisted for the crime of just being Joe. When they asked him to name names, he launched into a long litany of people he's been, but they stopped him after Methuselah. As his good friend Charlie Chaplin said, Joe, I make me movies for the people, and you're a whole lot of people rolled into one. Okay. Good. Um, in this, uh, well, this, uh, okay. Joe the toy maker. In, in Demla, Sweden, Joe carves wooden houses, designs elegant doll houses, creates modular toys decades before Legos. His toys, they say, come alive in the imaginations of children. Not surprising, since centuries ago, he lived on a floating asteroid and built replicants. And uh, here's one for, uh, Irish theme one. Joe the poet's bike. Oh, for that old black single speed policeman's bike Joe bought in Dublin through the classifieds when she was young and her gleaming new red five speed had been cut from the gate at Stevens Green. It was sturdy and made you feel confident in the saddle and could ride it in any weather. Its gears were strong enough to propel you or the lip of the Grand Canal or up the high ground past the castle and smooth enough to let you cruise down to Belfield or all the way up to the Phoenix Park. It would guide your way to Rathgar and Rathmines after that fifth pint. And best of all, no one would try to steal it because it wasn't flashy and it wasn't new and it wasn't American or German engineered. But let me let you in on a little secret. It possessed a soul. It was a magic bike such as you can read about in The Third Policeman or The Crack of Gold. It was a poet's bike. Its molecules entered you and your mind entered it. Some strange things could result, but it was a joy to ride and a boon to own. Uh, <clears throat> Joe the poet reads a book. Joe's just sitting against a wall reading down in the homeless camp by the highway overpass when along comes a police officer who asks him, why are you reading while black? Joe says he's just passing the time. The officer says it don't look like pornography, but it does look subversive. Joe says it's called The Wretched of the Earth, and the cop says that's a funny title. Joe takes out his pen. The officer arrests him for carrying a dangerous weapon. Joe says, that's the truest thing anyone said to me all day. Uh, okay, I think I got maybe time for one more. Um, well, let's do, let's do Joe the poet votes. Joe's one of those aliens who manages to vote. The kind talk radio is always complaining about. Joe's real home is the dog star Sirius, but his birth certificate says USA and it's legit because he was born at New Buffalo Commune, Arroyo Honda, New Mexico, 1971. When Joe votes its absentee, even when he's in the booth, Joe votes for the downtrodden and the earth we all trod. 
Joe wasn't reborn yesterday. So he's suspicious of political messiahs having known a few real ones. If Joe comes to your door holding a clipboard, be sure to ask him for a poem. Thanks all. Wow. Joe is, is one eclectic human being. What, what an imagination, what a life Joe has led. Thank you so much, John, for that very spirited reading from your new book, Joe Rides Again, The Further Travels of Joe the Poet. From, from Foothills Publishing. Congratulations, and thank you so much for sharing the poems of Joe with us today. Well, next, I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome back Moira Donaldson to read on Cultivating Voices 